Hi, my name is Karina Kansade. I'm a senior regulatory consultant for Karen Associates. Most of the manufacturers nowadays have to have post-market systems in place. Uh, they're required under European requirements, and they have been for a while. So this is something that's not new to them. It's something that's been there. It's just been kind of a sleeping system that they've really kind of ignored. A lot of my experience has been with manufacturers where they are not even aware they're required to be trending ongoing their data. So post-markets, I can see them moving more into a more proactive system, and it's luckily it's being imposed also by the notified body. So not just FDA, but now now other regulatory bodies, including notified bodies, are requiring most post-market activities happening and leaving the manufacturers with being responsible for it being that, not just always just blaming it on the FDA. Most of the questions that they had was related to uh, how they're going to be able to capture, especially with reusable instruments, the requirements of filing MDRs and how do they keep track of activities when they're reusing their devices with different pop patient population. Their concerns were related to the UDIs where now they have to include this number into their product labeling, into the product itself and they're going to be faced with a lot of challenges with incorporating databases because these are things that are going to be required when it, this policy comes into place, if it does, and most likely will. But being able to, how are they going to introduce the UDI systems? So there's a lot of infrastructure from an IT perspective coming in. Uh, they see challenges. There, were, there was a lot of concerns about that, about with inspections that they are noticing that the agency is focusing more again on their trending, uh, not being able to really understand how they can better apply uh, graphs and trends and how to present that kind of data to their executive management. And the challenge that they usually have is also the lack of involvement of executive management to really understand why management review is really that important and what kind of data needs to be presented in this. The one hot issue I thought today uh, was for them to really understand uh, how complaints, how post market, how uh, MDR reporting, how vigilance reporting, uh, it's going to be a lot based on linking the risk and trying to link their risk control numbers into their MDR reporting. So being consistent in their reporting, there was a lot of concerns because they, they realize that sometimes they don't always, uh, they have the same, fi same, same failure, similar failures, and one does get reported and the other one does not. So they, we talked about, you know, this, you know, looking at the risk management program, uh, understanding that it's really a requirement to link risk to your complaints and try to use the risk management, the risk, the risk control numbers that you give your failures because when you do a risk assessment, you're identifying failures. So using those same numbers into your complaint failure so when you're doing trending, it's easier for you to already know. So we recommended, they asked us for some tools and we recommended that you in your risk assessment identify those incidents or those failures that would cause for you to file an MDR. So there's always a consistent reporting into those failures because you might not remember what you reported three years ago. But if if you have it in your risk assessment and if you have it and you've given it a risk control measure, the only thing you do is take those numbers and put them into your complaint failure codes and you will know exactly whether you need to report that incident or not based on your, on your previous thinking. One of the advice I did have is that they should start setting up a task team, a uh, project leader, just like any other project. Uh, it's going to affect their infrastructure from an IT perspective. So bringing in people from IT to be able to understand what kind of barcoding system you're going to have to have, uh, it's going to be very painful for the small manufacturer. You know, those manufacturers that are very, don't have the resources to bring in barcoding systems to maybe bring in the whole infrastructure to hire the IT person full time or whomever is going to implement. So some of the things I recommended, and that is why when the uh, UDI number uh, comes out, you know, most manufacturers will have up to five years to be able to start meeting that requirement. So they do have to time. But like anything else, we kind of leave that to the end. We kind of have to say, we'll just deal with it in five years. I strongly recommend it, especially if you're a small company, to start putting a task team and try to figure out what areas you're going to have to modify and the kind of resources you're going to need in order to do, do a right thing and not have to end up at the last moment where you're no longer meeting the requirements and you won't be able to commercialize your products anymore because you're not meeting that requirement. And that will be a requirement that will basically be looked upon by the FDA during inspections. We see a lot of recalls because manufacturers are getting better at looking at their processes. And most of the recalls are not so much design related as they are manufacturer related. 
So, you know, they're looking at, they, they're putting together Six Sigma projects, they're trying to figure out ways to control their manufacturing, and they realized that they had some previous hiccups before in manufacturing, where they take a conscious decision to really know, and I think a lot has to do with education of the regulatory and quality people, to be able to help uh, their, their companies and identify the need to recall these kinds of products. Now, the recalls that I see mostly happening are really due to manufacturing issues, packaging issues, labeling issues. So these are things that can be corrected and they are doing it through detection through their trends. Uh, so trends and, and implementing good process FMEA. So that's another big thing here. So understanding how important the risk management program is and trending does help them. And I think that's why there's an increase in uh, the amount of recalls that are happening as well as technology. We've become more globalized, so it's easier to get access to information at a faster time.